I'm Jack, the product manager for Cara VR, a suite of plugins for Nuke for dealing with 360 VR material, covering everything from stitching through standard comp workflows to headset review. In this second part of two videos on comp workflows, we're going to focus on how to work with 3D environments with 360 material, employing C-Ray Render, as well as building fundamental stereo correction operators using C Disparity Generator. We're going to use this shot from the mission, courtesy of New Deal Studios, which we stitched earlier in this tutorial series. Let's take a look at C-Ray Render. Ray Render, which this is based on, was introduced in Nuke 10. It's a ray tracing renderer for Nuke's 3D system. It's particularly useful for lat long material for a couple of reasons. First, it's nippy to produce full 360 renders, and it gives better quality results towards the poles than scanline render. Second, because it's actually following the path of the rays, we can perform some shading tricks that prove very useful. In this case, introducing a lens shader that models a slit scan camera. Here we essentially remap the 3D scene as if we were shooting it through a stereo pair on a sphere, almost as if you were rendering little vertical slices and stitching those together. On top of that, this shader can fall off the disparity between the left and the right views as you get to the poles. Why would you want that? Well, picture wearing a headset and looking up at that top pole. Your left eye is on the left of your initial direction in space. If you were now to turn your head to look directly behind you and then look up, Whilst this would be a bit awkward to do, your left eye would now be on the right hand side of your initial direction in space, meaning that as you look across that pole, the left eye would have to snap to the right eye's position and vice versa, which as you might imagine is pretty unpleasant to look at. Instead of doing that, the convention is to actually reduce the disparity between the left and right eyes to zero for that pole and increase it again down to max by the time you hit the circumference horizon line. I've got a little script set up here which shows you this oddity. So what we're doing is we're taking a source, left and right view, which is just these vertical stripes. We're then colouring the left and right view to be green and red. Popping this onto a sphere in Nuke's 3D system, and as you can see, the slices fall off down to the pole region. We're then popping this 3-ray render, which is rendering to a full spherical lat long. And we've got slit scan switched on so that we're getting left and right views out of this with a particular IPD separation. So if we look at the output here, you can see our left and our right views in lat long space. Now I'm going to drop them through a spherical transform so we can just look at the very top region. You can see how you get this slight swirling which you wouldn't expect and that's because of the offset of the camera from the central position in the sphere. And then I'm going to mix left and right views together. At the minute, I've got no fall off towards the poles, so this would give you that snapping sensation as you look over the top of the image. If I switch this to say cosine, you can see how that polar region drops off to zero nice and cleanly. I can instead drop in our lat long stitch, and now if I switch between no fall off and then cosine fall off, you can see how those clouds converge where there's zero disparity with the fall off option at the center. And you can also see how the trees get closer together due to the fall-off as well. There's a couple of fall-off models included, allowing you to tune the fall-off to match whatever your stitcher or renderer has, so that you can match whatever you're doing in comp. And if you stitch with Cara VR, you should recognise the same models available on the C-Stitcher itself. Let's look at this whole frame in the renderer. There's a few tips to bear in mind here. First, the environment sphere we're using. By default, this has divisions of 30 and 30. This is fine in normal nuke work, but when you're doing lat long renders where you're seeing the polar regions, you'll find that the UV interpolation on spheres is tricky towards those areas, so it's best to up the divisions to help reduce the visual impact. You'll also see how, compared to my original image, we've actually flipped on the X axis. And this is because we're texturing this sphere and then we're rendering it from within. So because of the way the interpolation of those coordinates works, it's flipped in the X axis, so we just need to flip that back in our output camera frustrum. You could do this with a mirror node as a post-process, but doing it on a single hit makes sense. Also, we're just directly texturing this sphere here, but a lot of the time you may actually have custom geometry which you want to project this stitch onto. There's a couple of tricks to projecting a 360. So let's drop in our project into here and then we'll pop this onto our initial camera, which is set up to project a spherical, of course, not a rectilinear. 
You'll also see that now, because our frustrum is at minus one, both for the projection and the render, that we've uh, flipped it back again. So let's drop another camera in here. And for this subset camera, again, pop this on spherical, and let's flip our X. But if you pop into the 3D preview view, which is handled by Nuke outside of the ray render, you'll see this still looks a bit wonky. To get this looking similar, we'll need to set our near clip lane, because right now it's still in front of the camera, and of course we need to project on stuff behind as well. So let's set this to minus the equivalent of the front. And now we need to fake our focal length to get roughly the right value. So let's work up from one until we start seeing the tops giving holes. So something like this should give you enough to work in Nuke's 3D preview. For the final section of this video, I want to touch on the C disparity generator. This is a bit of a fundamental building block tool, but for all you techie types out there, it could prove invaluable. It allows you to get a set of vectors mapping between different views. Here, I've got my left and right stitches as lat longs. The vectors I'll get will model how a pixel moves from the left to the right image. So I've added a disparity generator and I've got it set up to look at left and right views. If I look at its output and look in the disparity channel, we can see the vectors that map from the left to the right and back again. They don't look like much, but we can use the standard Nuke tools like STMAP or iDistort to apply these in all manner of ways. What makes this different to other disparity generators is it has a projection mode that understands lat long space. So here, like the other tools we've touched on, it'll actually map vectors that move from this side of the image over to this one. And without that, the edges of the frame may show fringing. Use it carefully though, because it does introduce a bunch of extra compute time. Underneath this, I've split out my separate views, so left and right separately. And I've warped my left view with iDistort so that it should align with my right view. So this is a totally synthetic version of the right view created by warping the left by the disparity vectors. So original left, original right, new left warp to right, old right, new synthetic right, old right, new synthetic right. This new view will be off where the vectors have failed, for example in regions of occlusion, but it's surprisingly good. Now what I've done is I've subtracted my synthetic from the real to give me a sense of the difference between them. I can now process this in any way I see fit. In this case, I'm going to do a NAF blur job. It should probably be a lat long blur using spherical transform, but this will do for now. And then I'll merge this over the original right. Now I have my original right and my color corrected right using the difference from the synthetic right. If I compare this original left and new process right, you can see that my process right has had some color correction applied to it. And this gives me a cheap frame fix for color differences between the views, meaning if I've already got a stitch from somewhere and I don't want to have to go back and tweak the source, I could do something like this to patch it up. Other uses include things like vertical alignment for third party stitches, basically anything where the relationship between the stereo views could prove useful. And that about wraps it up. So C spherical transform allows you to employ a batch of standard Nuke workflows on 360 material. C ray render allows you to render CG scenes to 360 speedily and with a slit scan shader with disparity fall off that can match your choice of stitcher and renderer. And C disparity generator is a building block tool you can use for all manner of lat long problem solving.